guys. You can pay me whenever you're ready. <laughs> my parents finally bought my convertible. Look, red is gonna make me look so hot. <laughs> Why don't I pick you up and we can go cruise the lake for some hotties tonight? I can, I gotta work. <sighs> Do you ever get a night off? Yeah, you know what? I'll go with you. Of course you will. It's been crazy around here today. Yeah, you know what? Everyone's been celebrating. Celebrating what? It's like someone didn't hear the news. What? What news? Francis Larson hung himself in his cell last night. Yeah, you know, I'm so sad. Me too. Me too bad we couldn't have done it for him. I mean, talk about a freak out. Oh, I'm picked on, so now I have to kill someone because they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't believe they're not cremating him. I mean, how do they expect to get him in the casket? <laughs> I'll be right back. See? She didn't think it was fun. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> You doing okay? Can I get you anything else? Why don't you like a real job? I have a job, but thank you. <laughs> right, me <laughs> too. Consider that a signing bonus. Susan, <gasps> would you run up and wake your father? So let me get this straight. If you want to take my daughter up to your club in the Twin Cities, when there's thousands of kids who live up there, that can work for you. Well, let's just say that uh, Susan's been highly recommended by a friend. Who's his friend? I'm not willing to share that, but uh, I'm willing to share that with you. I don't understand why you're spending so much money on her. Here's the deal, Mr. Campbell. I wish to buy your silence and Susan's dedication, both of which are very important to me. Now, after Susan's finished working for me, she'll be able to do whatever she wants, any job, any school, anywhere. And, uh, well, from the look of things, uh, I'd say you've done all you can for her. Just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you can walk into my house and insult me. Dad, I can't make enough money here to go to college and take care of you, too. How can I trust you that nothing bad will happen to my daughter? I think you and I both know that, uh... that uh, she'd be a lot safer off with me taking care of her. She's 18. She can do what she wants. It's up to her. Good. Susan, what do you think? Mr. Delano's nephew, Frank. Frank's going to be staying with us this summer. Nice to meet you. Well, nice to finally meet you. Your uncle cannot stop talking about you. He does love to hear himself talk. 
<laughs> Miss Campbell is our star protege. Everything you see here tonight, she is in charge of. Except for tonight. Tonight you're joining us for dinner. Oh, what about... Don't worry, already taken care of. Oh, okay. Follow me. Isn't it just a touch ironic that for years they tried to uh, drive our so-called kind out of town because we were bad for business? You weren't so bad for business when you showed up with that suitcase full of cash and bailed that old man out. He's lucky you always wanted to own that park. And how does he show his gratitude? I'm still holding his gold pen and signing the contract. He pokes his finger in my chest and says, good luck at making any money, sucker. I grabbed his finger and I said, good luck at making any money? I'm not only going to make money, but I'm going to make it with a kid running the place. And then, I snapped it in two. His finger? No, the gold pen. But I gave him the finger. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, tonight, Susan, sitting right next to my nephew, Frank, and meeting him again for the very first time. Here's to uh, new beginnings and old acquaintances. Here, here. I really think you'd like him when we have time. I'll give you all the time you need. After all, he's the reason that you're here. He is? Wait. Remember that amusement park Mr. Delano was talking about at the table earlier? Yeah? Mr. Delano wants you to go back home and manage Arnold's Park next summer. Why would he want me to do that? To help his nephew. What, what does his nephew have to do with Arnold's Park? Didn't you find it a little odd that the same night you found out Francis Larson committed suicide was the same night that you were hired? Francis Larson? How do you know about Francis Larson? Francis Larson never committed suicide. Yes, he did. They had a funeral and everything. What are you talking about? That was all part of the cover-up from paying off the prison warden to faking his death, the funeral, hiring you. Bobby did it all to send him back with you. Francis Larson is a killer. He murdered Barbara Stratton. He never murdered that girl. He's going back home to expose Barbara Stratton's real killer. And we want you to help him. No, 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 this is crazy. There is no way that honey, that is I know Francis it's hard Larson. To believe, no, honey, that I is know impossible. It's to believe. But for the past two years, he's been training. He's been changing his appearance. He's doing... Sorry that I ruined your night. You didn't ruin it. Look, about everything that happened in the past, I just don't, want to say... Don't, don't. You don't have to apologize. And if you decide to stay, you don't have to pretend that you like me.
Hey. So you settling in all right? Oh, yeah. This place is great. Good. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. Thanks. Do you have any plans for tonight? No. You want to go to a baseball game? Yeah, sure. Okay, so pick me up at five? Oh, yeah, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, that works out. Okay, good. We'll see you tonight. Okay. game half circus there's a pig carrying baseballs out to the empire and what is with this guy on the side if he hangs there for the entire game he gets ten thousand dollars are you serious yep that's crazy that's entertainment that's why i like coming here it gives me all kinds of ideas for work don't you ever stop thinking of work no <laughs> so um you talk to jackie much anymore yeah, we talk on the phone, and um, when we're both in Iowa, we'll go out. I remember you used to have a crush on her when you were a kid. Yeah, and everyone used to think I had a crush on Barbara, too, and used it as a motive to accuse me. So why are you asking about Jackie? My uncle wants you to bring her up here sometime. That might be kind of difficult because she leaves for school in a few days and whenever she has any free time, she's always spending it with Billy. I know, but I really need to talk to her before I go home. So you think you're ready for this? Think. I know I'm ready. Oh, you gonna make it to the plate? Uh -huh. All right, do I get a few warm-up pitches? I'll tell you what, to make it fair, I'm gonna bat left-handed. Oh, all right, I see how it is. All right, come on. <laughs> Just gonna, you know, step over here. You ready? Yeah. You're out. All right, yeah, yeah. Just pitch the ball, okay? This time I'm gonna hit it. All right. Cheater! He fixed to the left, to the ah! right. <laughs> You're out. At least you didn't strike me out. I was in San Francisco. All I could think about was coming back home so I could prove to everyone that, you know, I could be somebody. You've changed a lot. Yeah, but look at you. I hear the way people talk about you. I mean, you're 20 and you already run one of the hottest nightclubs in the Midwest. You're amazing. Why did you pick me anyway? What do you mean? When your uncle came to my house, he told my dad that I was recommended by somebody. Why me? Because you were one of them? And I knew you didn't want to be. You're right, I didn't. Hey. 
There's three outs in an inning. Uh. I got a couple more swings. Come on. Oh. Hey, don't you put your hat back? Frank, this is Susan's friend from back home, Jackie. Jackie, Frank. It's nice to have Susan bring a friend up from back home. She made a good choice. Thank you. Good evening. And welcome to our annual Christmas party. Now, I'd like to start by saying thank you to each and every one of you for spending so much of your time, but more importantly, so much of your money here. Now, it is going to a good cause. Me. <laughs> now, to show you how much we appreciate it, tonight not only are the drinks and the food free for the entire evening, but each of you will leave with a Christmas goose. So, ladies, if you haven't been goose before you leave, see me. <laughs> okay, at this time, I'd like to bring up someone very important and special to the Rossi's family. Susan Campbell, come up on the stage. Don't make me fire you in front of all these people. It'd be very embarrassing. Come on. Come on. She's shy. That's better. Now, I've got some good news, and I've got some bad news. First, the good news. The reason that each of you has such a great time when you're here is because of the hard work of this young woman. Now, here's the bad news. This is Susan's last Christmas with us. Yes, next summer, she is going to be running my latest venture. But in the meantime, I think we owe her a round of applause for all of her hard work. Susan, <laughs> Rossi's would not be the same without you. Okay. Hear that? I think I hear somebody coming down the chimney, and I bet it's the fire marshal. Okay. No, actually, look, it's old Saint Nick. Or as I like to call him, Old St. Bobby, because he's got a bag full of gifts from me to you. So make sure you get over there to see Santa. Have fun tonight, everybody. so surreal. I can't believe Susan's in charge of all of it. Yeah. She's gonna be doing the same thing at Arnold's Park this summer. My uncle. He bought Arnold's Park. And Susan's gonna be managing it. Shh. That's our secret, okay? I'll try. You'll try. <laughs> so tell me. Are there any secrets you would like to share with the handsome young man we just met? Oh. <laughs> Come on, there's gotta be one. I love to write. I do it all the time. I would give anything to write a bestseller someday. What would you write about? A story that's bigger than life. Like the great Gatsby. I've never read it. No? No. Is it as great as the title suggests that it is? Funny. He loved a girl so much that he spent his life doing whatever it took to come back and win her. girl in the end? I can't tell you that. You'll have to read it for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. 
Susan, I don't know how you did it, but this is the best Christmas party we have ever had. <laughs> Everybody is having a great time. Except for you. You're having trouble watching the two of them together, aren't you? No, it's just... Um, no, that's what we planned Susan. about. Susan, don't kid a kidder. See the way you look at it. It's, I can't believe that I planned this whole night just to watch him fall in love with her. Oh. Um, maybe this will help. Merry Christmas. You didn't have to get me anything. You've given me so much already. Well, that's true. But uh, I haven't given you this. Go ahead, open it. <laughs> I'll open it. It's really important that Frank does not know that you know. You know, you might find this hard to believe, but, uh, I understand what you're going through right now. And don't think for one second that you aren't going to be rewarded for what you're feeling. When this whole thing is over and done with, everything you could possibly want, you'll have it. Okay. Can, can I have a better smile than that? <laughs> that cheap little grin? No, that's much better. All right. You okay? Mm -hmm. How's it going, Bobby? Well, you know, Romeo, you laid it on a little thick last weekend. Oh, yeah, that's what you want, right? In the future, rule of thumb, moderation is the key, all right? Okay. I just got back from Iowa last night. We got a little hitch in our giddy-up. Jackie won't be coming back to see you. Why? She and Billy got engaged. Apparently, you aren't all you thought you were. They're getting married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Billy found out about the two of you, felt threatened. Tighten the leash. How can she marry a jerk like that? Frank, think about it. I've been going out since, what, junior high? Throwing a little father influence? Jackie's still running a little scared, that's all. Is that gonna mess things up? Nah. If she's anything like her mother, I wouldn't be sending out wedding invitations just yet. <laughs> Besides, I'm more concerned about you screwing up things right now. Thanks for your vote of confidence. Look, I know the hell they put you through back there, okay? You know, memories start to creep back in, gets too personal. Well, this is personal, don't you think? Yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm all for a little revenge. But I won't have you getting personally attached to anyone. Especially Jackie. So, you will not see Jackie until you go back next summer. Mentally, you're just not ready. Look, Bobby, I'm not a kid. I know it's important, but I'm not going to screw it up. I am hey, right. Hey, you know what? Don't you ever challenge me. Now, here's something you need to understand. There comes a point of no return, and if you're not ready,
that everything that I've done, everything, the money, the planning, everything is for nothing. And I really hate losing. Do you understand that? Yeah. Good. And run along and do your 10,000 sit-ups or whatever it is you do to keep the girls happy. I can't do this. You can do this. Yes, you can. You can do this. What if they recognize him? What if they recognize him? They won't. They won't recognize him. I'll be there for you, I promise. to uh, thank our mayor and his lovely wife for coming out and supporting us today. How about a little hand? <laughs> the theme for this summer at Arnold's Park, expect the unexpected. <laughs> for your first surprise, I would like to announce all rides are free. for the entire summer. Now the reason for the failure of this park over the last couple of years is obvious. No one was having any fun. Therefore, we at Arnold's intend to put fun, and dare I say, plenty of excitement, back in the Lake Okoboji community. I can assure you, we will not Disappoint. Are you guys ready to ride? Let's go ride. We be walking, we be high, face to face and side by side. So you two must be so excited with the wedding just a month away. Oh, we are. We went and picked up a dress last week in Sioux Falls. Oh, I cried. <laughs> I couldn't believe I've grown up for a little Jackie. Oh, honey, that's so sweet. I keep hoping Johnny will notice his friends growing up. Oh, let him be a kid. 
So, Jack, the sheriff tells me that Billy starts his job as a deputy this week. Mm -hmm. Police officer in the family, you're the prosecutor. You've got every branch of justice in this county sewn up. That's why I'm trying to get Rachel to run for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Little man trying to act big, trying to impress everybody. Bet he's been dreaming of this moment his whole life. What in the hell is he thinking of anyway? Getting an uneducated girl to run Arnold's park. I mean, is he nuts or what? Uh, Susan will do just fine. She's always been able to take yes. care of herself. Yeah, I'm sure that's not all she took care of up at that mobster hangout. Oh, please, Steve, the mob. What? Oh, I don't think they even exist anymore. <laughs> even if they did, what would they want with Arnold's park? Yeah, well, I'll bet you a million bucks he's behind that atrocious pirate radio DJ. Oh, you're just jealous because he got the park and you didn't. Let it go. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Come back next week, all right? There's a smiling face. I'm sure we'll see you soon. Wow, Mr. May. Well, Mr. Delano. Could I interest you in an after-dinner cigar? Oh, no, thanks. I have my own. Ah, not like these. From Castro's personal supply. Mm -hmm. I'll pass. Okay. Well, I'm glad you came out today, and uh, thanks for being a good sport. I know you just as soon see this whole site cluttered with condos, but... I think in the end, you're going to like what this does for the community. Mm. Besides, this is all just a, a little preview of things to come. Really? Uh -huh. What else do we have to look forward to? Fun. You know, the little thing you avoided your whole life because you uh, lack imagination. <laughs> Unlike you, who enjoys wasting his money trying to impress everyone and just ends up showing them what lousy business sense he has. Lousy business sense? Huh. Take a look around, Steve. This place is crawling with customers. Free rides all summer. Mm, it's a little over the top. You know, and it's that attitude that caused this place to go to hell. Now, here's how I see it. These people, they're gonna go home tonight, and they're gonna tell all their friends how much fun they had, and then they're all gonna come back over and over again. And they're gonna buy my merchandise and buy my food. Had you pegged for an astute businessman, you should know, you gotta be willing to give something if you wanna get some. Oh, you know, that's so true. It's kind of like Rachel gave up you to get Jack. Listen, I, uh, I don't know what you have up your sleeve, but I can guarantee you that we're going to be watching every move you make. Everybody in town knows who you left with 20 years ago. And wouldn't you be surprised who I came back with? And yet you tune in to listen to me again. Which proves to me that the old saying is right. Every beaten dog returns to their master. Have a nice day. You know, folks, if I've offended anyone out there, it certainly wasn't my intention. Oh, wait a minute. It was. Thanks for making it so easy. It's like school's almost out. <laughs> yeah. That was about to ring. Ring it, baby. <laughs> Your game is either broken or fixed. There's nothing yeah. wrong with the game. Why can't I hit the bell then, man? Because it's a game for strong people. <laughs> what? 
not everybody's gonna be able to hit the bell. Pick a toy and a toy. Uh, the big monkey. The lady, the big monkey, please. You have to win it first, dude. I will. Watch out. Look at this clown. <laughs> hey, super fly, don't wear your pretty little self out. <laughs> Maybe next time you should stick to the rain toss or something. It's obvious that our drug-induced culture has taken over our society. I mean, did you ever see that show, Castano Girls? What kind of person would allow that on television? But that's not surprising. We were all raised on this kind of absurdity. Remember Hee Haw? How did that last for over 15 years? Caller, you're on the air. I've come back. From what? A drug overdose? Everyone thought I was dead. Tell it to someone who cares. Next caller, please. Don't you want to know who I am? Yeah, we already know. You're the dead guy. Pirate Radio, you're on the air. You'll never believe who I just saw walking along Lake Okoboji. I guess that narrows it down to everybody. Who did you see? Francis Larson. Never heard of him. He committed suicide after going to jail for killing Barbara Stratton. So you saw his ghost or something? I'm telling you, it was him. You'll see anything if you're smoking grass or on meth. This isn't the Art Bell Show. See you in rehab. Have a nice day. You're listening to Pirate Ring. Okay, guys, let's get one more. Get together really to Oh, it'll just take a second. Here we go. One. Big smiles. Two. Three. Oh, that's really nice. Let's get one more, and then we'll be done. Very nice. So you're the photographer, Susan Hyatt. I'm Bobby Delano. Oh, sure, the owner of the park. Yes. Hi, I am Dana Morris. Dana, nice to meet you. Maybe I should give a picture of you. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm sure you probably have plenty of me already. But I do want you to get a shot of everyone else in the park. One of your mug shots might be worth a lot of money someday. Here's the caption as I see it. Murder wanders free in Arnold's Park. Can I catch you? Cute family. All right, guys, let's get one more. Here we go. One, two, three. Here's a little joke you might enjoy. Why do so many kids in Iowa want to be a taxidermist when they grow up? Because they get to mount animals. Pirate Radio, you're on the air. I wasn't finished. Well, I was finished talking to you, moron. Don't you want to know why I'm here? Please, humorous. I'm back to make life hell on the person that drowned Barbara Stratton. This guy is obviously gone insane. On July 4th, I will reveal the name of Barbara Stratton's real killer on this radio station. Hey, moron. I know you're listening out there. Stop calling me tonight already. If you're dead and everyone thinks you're dead, then you're dead. That's the way I see it. All right. You all right? Doesn't look like you're having any fun. Frank, what are you doing? I'm just talking to you. Yeah, but then he sees you. You deserve better than that. If he sees you, he's gonna want to. Hey, I'm not worried. Frank, it's my fiance. There's nothing you can do about that. What do you think you're doing, asshole? Oh, I'm just uh, talking to him. Well, that's my fiance, so why don't you go talk to somebody else? You don't own her. Besides, this is my part. I'll just go home, Billy. Why don't you make me? Billy, just. Jackie, shut up! You know why, Billy? What'd you say to me, man? I'm sorry. I don't think I heard you right. I said because you're not worth it. Oh, man, you're so dead. Okay, you guys, it's time to go in separate directions. You stay out of this. I blame you just as much as I blame this Really, just calm down. I know she cheated on me when she was up in the cities with you. Oh, really? Every time I think about that night, I have a hard time marking the smile off my face. No? Yeah. Well, maybe this will help. Oh! 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 
will. Not what I expected. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you know, I just figured you being Bobby Delano's nephew might have something a little more flashy. Interesting art collection. Did you paint these? No, I got them from an artist up in the city. Kinda dark and creepy, don't you think? No, I think they're mysterious and misunderstood. That's why I got them. So, are you uh, one of those people who roots for the villains then, too? Depends upon their reason for being a villain. Tell me, why do you root for them? What makes you think I do? You're standing here with me, aren't you? <laughs> are you a villain? Seems like everyone around here thinks I am. I guess that would make me a villain, too. You know, since I'm here with you. Is that what you want to be? I don't think so. Because in the end, the villains never win. At least not in the movies. Come on, what do you say we get out of here? All right. All right. How about a big frog, huh? Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> you enjoy. Come on, here's one for you, too. You have fun. Get on those free rides. Howdy, handsome. I need to speak to your nephew. I think he's on one of the rides with his new girlfriend. I don't know if you know her. Uh, Jackie Newmar? No, 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 no. Jackie Newmar is engaged to my son. Uh, no, actually, there's been a slight change in the lineup. He's been benched and uh, carried off the field. Yeah, well, we'll see how smart you are when I put him under arrest. For what? Defending himself? Look, he started it by hitting on my son's fiance. Is there some kind of city ordinance against that? There is against drug use. Oh, thank you, Susan. Which reminds me, doesn't he start duty this weekend? So, uh, tell me, Chief, what is his job, anyway? To smoke dope and then drive the back roads looking for drunks and kids that can't afford a room at the inn? You know, maybe I didn't make myself clear this afternoon. I don't know what you've got going on, but you better watch your step because I will run you right out of this town. My dad did it 20 years ago, and I am more than willing to do it again. Yeah, well, listen, Daddy's boy. He didn't run us out of town. He just let this place go to hell, and we found another place to play. If you have any other concerns, I would advise you to take those up with the park manager. Anything else I can help you with? I just don't see why Francis the Friendly Ghost should have all the fun. So while he's busy terrorizing this town, how about all of you try to find me? And if you do, $25,000 is yours. But you better start tonight because this offer is only good until the 4th. Happy hunting!
is this a bad time? It's a perfect time. Come on in. Well, how do you think I feel, Jack, Rachel? I huh? know. Makes honey. everybody look stupid. I understand. You've got. Mom. Dad. This is Frank. Hi. How are you? Say, um, I've got to uncover the boat. Maybe Frank here would give me a hand, huh? Dad, is this really necessary? Yes, it is. Yeah, I don't mind. Come on, Frank. You don't get it. I do not want you seeing my daughter, do you understand? I don't want you anywhere near her. No, I don't. Listen, I know the kind of company that you and Delano keep, okay? And I have a family's reputation to protect. And if you have any respect for this family, which includes Jackie, you will respect my wishes. What about Jackie's wishes? Well, you know something? My wishes trump hers as long as she's under my roof. I see. Then I can't respect your wishes. She's 21 and can leave home whenever she wants. And I have more than enough money to support her. So if you want her home under your roof every night at a decent time, you will let me see her. No, wait. I don't... I'm not finished. And I think it would be a great gesture for you to throw a big, fat, juicy T-bone in the grill for me, huh? Now let's go take care of that boat, Jack. Smells great, counselor. Hey. Is Rachel upstairs? Yeah, she's in the kitchen. What the hell is he doing here? I don't want to talk about it. I heard every night in the summer, Francis would go out fishing the shorelines around Lake Okoboji. So what? The kid had no friends. He had to do something. Yeah, but I was thinking that might be why we're seeing his ghost all around the lake. Possibly. Or maybe all of you hallucinating freaks have had one too many puffs on your magic dragon. Have a nice day. This song goes out to Francis Larson, who apparently has come alive after being dead for a couple years. That is such a sick way to attract an audience. Frank, doesn't your uncle own this radio station? No, we're just the first to broadcast it. Yet you broadcast this station, which is trying to scare the hell out of everybody by convincing them that a convicted murderer is still alive and on the loose. That's the thing about a call show. You never know who or what's gonna call. Like a dead kid. Or maybe he's still alive. <laughs> yeah, good one, baby. <laughs> well, if this zombie Francis is still alive, why hasn't the whale beached himself? <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny, Tom. That's exactly what they want you to think, that he is still alive. They'll do anything to improve their ratings. But try telling that to the county coroner. Records don't lie. Maybe he did. Well, I kind of doubt that. Because as county prosecutor, I saw the report. Hey, Jack. Steak's great. Let me tell you the truth. Any of you all go to his funeral? Did any of you all see him laying in his casket? I didn't think so. Maybe it really is his ghost. Come on, Jackie. There's no such thing as ghosts. You know what I think is weird? All these people talking about seeing his ghost around town. Nobody's mentioned once seeing him at the burger stand. <laughs> I mean, come on, seriously. Don't you think the mayor of Jiggletown could use a welcome back snack? <laughs> you guys know about this barber girl that he killed? She was, uh, really... Pretty. And she was really poor. Listen to you. None of us were running nightclubs and amusement parks at a high school. Whatever. I just... I, I never understood why she could have all the best clothes and her family was on welfare and paying off all those medical bills. I still don't understand why Francis killed her. <laughs> Did he like her or something? <laughs> I mean, how come nobody really knows? Will, I know. It was an accident, guys. An accident? Oh, yeah. She's walking home along the lake, right? She didn't know he was doing his night fishing, <laughs> OK? She 
She walks past him. His stench is so pungent. <laughs> she passes out and falls in the lake. What he actually did was jump in to save her, not drown her. So she's thinking she's got a choice to make. Breathe Francis's B.O. or breathe the water. And I think she did what any one of us would have done in that situation. Come on. Ah, the obituaries. Anyone you know in there? Unfortunately, no. Kind of a funny statement coming from a man who claims to love everyone. Listen, do you think you and I could be civil to each other long enough to do a little business? Sure. Grab a seat. <clears throat> you got two minutes. Ah, oh, right. Busy man. Well, I'll make this quick. I want you to sell Arnold's Park to me Arnold's and... Park is not for sale. ...and a group of investors. Arnold's Park is not for sale. Right. Well, I thought you might say that, so... I've come prepared. turning it down. Mm -hmm. I like to finish what I start. This is... This is three times the amount you paid for it. Arnold's Park is a trophy, and you don't sell trophies. Now, unless, of course, you're a desperate man, but I'm uh, not. Well, things change. Three months from now, this might be looking pretty good, and it'll be too late. I'll take my chances. Don't change, do you, Bobby? Enjoy your breakfast. Thanks. Everyone thinks I'm crazy to break off my engagement with Billy. To be with you. Are you? Probably. <laughs> um, I thought I loved him, but... I think it's because he's all I've ever really known. Maybe just because he made me feel safe. Do I make you feel safe? Not really. No. Hey, I think I've proven that I can protect you. Yeah, but you're kind of scary at the same time. Not in a bad way. <laughs> just that I can't figure you out. I think that's why I'm so attracted to you. It's a good thing, isn't it? Maybe. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Can't just sit around here all day.
What are you doing here? Solving my crossword puzzles. Wigwam. <laughs> Six down. I hear the two of you are getting really comfortable in her hammock today. <sighs> they got a spy on me every second of the day. Well, they're just doing their job. So am I. Bobby seems to think that you're more concerned with winning her love than seeking justice. Bobby told you to tell me that? Right, well, then tell Bobby. I must be doing a good job. Because not only did I fool her, apparently I fooled him. Oh. I'd hate to think it was the other way around. What do you mean? Jackie had no interest in you until she heard that Princess Larson was still alive. So? So, did you ever think that maybe she's using you? Using me for what? You've heard the old saying, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. She was afraid. That's why she didn't say anything that night, because she was afraid. Maybe. I just don't want anything bad to happen to you. Nothing bad will happen to me. I promise. Frank? What? I just want you to know that no matter what, I'll always be here. You know, every night these damn rotten kids are trespassing all over my property, looking for you. Yeah, well, I hope your wife didn't run out from underneath the porch and bite them on the leg. Pirate Radio, you're on the air. Uh, hey, <laughs> Mr. Pirate, you gotta help us. This crazy woman just chased us out of her house with a shotgun. What were you doing in there? We thought you'd be hiding in Francis's old house. <laughs> She's shooting at us. Guys, run! Huh, Francis's old house. Not a bad idea. Kids, remember finishing third here in Iowa never stopped Tower Dean. I might be in your treehouse. At the burger stand, Fisherman's War, Marble Beach, Emerson Bay, yeah! Man, I was only looking for the guy on the radio. I didn't mean to watch her undress. There's a damn prom in here, and all because of that idiot on the radio. Who's got control of this town now? Why don't you take care of this spectacle? Call the mayor and I have some information he is going to want to hear. Dolores Larson is Bobby Delano's sister? Are you kidding me? That means Francis Larson is Bobby Delano's nephew. His only nephew. How come we didn't know this? Well, apparently Bobby's dad kicked him out on the streets of Minneapolis when he was 15. By then he had quit school and some of the city's questionable characters were taking care of him. As far as we know, he never saw his sister Dolores again. So, who's the imposter? He seemed to appear out of nowhere about a year ago in Minneapolis. Wait a minute. Nobody just appears out of nowhere. I thought you guys were tracking Delano's every move. I don't think you're in any position to insult our work. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to pay a visit to that manager of his and see what she has to say. What do you think? My guys at the FBI tell me that she's legit. Don't tell me the Arnold's Park manager actually gets a day off. All work and no play squelches the imagination. What about you, detective? Are you working, or did you come here to sell me one of your photographs from my office? Who told you I was a detective? We know everything about everybody who comes to Arnold's Park. But I do have to say, your photographs are very impressive. I think the same could be said for your work here at Arnold's Park. 
I think everyone greatly underestimates Bobby Delano's decision to hire you. Mr. Delano didn't get where he is today by thinking like everyone else. It's hard to argue that after what I've seen here. But even in hindsight, it's a curious move. Is that what you're here to investigate? Why I was hired? Or has somebody committed a crime? Somebody did three years ago. The killer seems to be very much alive and well these days. That is the rumor. Do you believe he's still alive? From the way everybody's talking, it sounds like a distinct possibility. It's true. He would have needed a lot of help to pull that off, don't you think? Perhaps an uncle with plenty of connections. So my question is, who is his nephew? Because he's only got one. Did you ever stop to think that maybe you're not the only detective in town? So why don't you wait like everybody else for the big unveiling on the 4th? Or is your goal to find the guy in the radio and collect the prize money? I don't need the money. And what is it you need? I'm just trying to find answers like everyone else. And take my advice and do as we say here at Arnold's Park. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Yeah? It's almost the fourth, and you're gonna pay for what you did, and there's nothing you can do about it. Why are they blaming me for Barbara's murder? Uh, who's they? I just got a prank call from someone accusing me of killing Barbara. Well, did you? I can't even believe you'd ask me something like that. I was with Reagan that night, remember? You were there. Actually, I don't remember. Look, look I didn't do it, okay? What's the matter, Johnny? You don't like being bullied and picked on? Look, I'm telling you, I didn't do it. Well, I guess we'll all find out in the park, won't we? On your break, officer? For a couple more minutes. Has the chief mentioned why I'm here? Yeah. He told me all about it. Good. I have to leave town for a couple days, and I need you to deliver something to him. I think your father would be very interested in that information. Leave this. I bet your former fiance wished she knew about that. So, what were you talking to Susan Campbell about? Sit down. What were you thinking? Going to her about your problem. It's playing right into their hands. But I don't understand why they're blaming me. Because you picked on his fat nephew. Francis Larson was Delano's nephew. That's what all of this is about. Delano blames you for pushing the fat little baby right over the edge. So what if they put my name on the radio? So what if they do? Everybody knows you harassed the hell out of that kid. Listen. They're the bullies here. They're the ones trying to scare everybody. That's how they're trying to get you back. So don't let it get to you. Because that's just what they want. Hey. Are you, uh, 
screen for me. So you think Jack would mind if we took his boat out for a little midnight spin? I'll never know. I think it'd be kind of hard to fool a dad who's a lawyer. It's not that hard. I do it all the time. Besides, you have a couple of days to cover your tracks. You know, I don't understand why anybody who lives on a lake would leave for the fourth. He gets irritated with all the extra people and noise. He wants things calm and in control, which is why he doesn't like you. What's there to like? Billy, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Now, why don't we all get in my car and go for a little drive? Billy, please, just put the gun down. I said, get into my car before I blow this asshole here into fish bait. Look, Billy. Shut up, fat boy. Now go. Out of the car. Close the door. Billy, what the hell are we doing here? All right, start walking. Let's go. Now, come on. Over there, the grave. Francis Larson? That's what it says. Whether or not Francis Larson's in it is a different story, isn't it, Frank? What are you talking about? Of course he's in there. Are you sure about that? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I don't believe those prank calls. That's what I thought. So I figured we'd play a little game called Dig the Grave Up in 30 minutes or I blow your head off. Frank or Francis or whatever your name is, you got 30 minutes. Start digging. I heard you. Billy, this is so insane. Jeremy, let's go! He's right. There's nobody in there. I knew it. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Jackie. But I'm Francis Larson. I don't understand. I'm sorry. What don't you get? It's him. No, but, but the funeral and, and the suicide. Jackie, it's Fat Francis. I got the matching fingerprints in the car. He's just not fat anymore. But how could you? You know, it doesn't matter. It's time to put this asshole where he belongs. Billy, no. <laughs> And we're just a couple nights away from the 4th, and we all know what that means. Fireworks, cookouts, and this Francis bum calling to tell us who murdered Barbara Stratton. So, in the spirit of being on the cutting edge, we'll be broadcasting live from the murder scene. Cool, huh? But in the meantime, you can still cash in on the prize.
Can you believe it? Someone tried to dig up Francis Larson's grave last night. Like I'm going to park my rear end in somebody else's casket. It's amazing what people will do for a chance at some cash. I wonder what they found. Well, anyway, tonight we have a very special guest on the program. Dr. Johnson joins us from his vacation home in Florida. Now, Doctor, is it true you performed the autopsy on Barbara Stratton? That is correct. And you called me because you felt that there's something the public should know that was not disclosed? Yes. Barbara Stratton was pregnant. Pregnant? Wow, that's a shocking twist. That's crucial info to leave out of a report, don't you think, Doctor? Mr. Pirate, you have to understand something. This is a small town. The Stratton family was going through enough. That kind of information would only inflict more undue pain. Besides, the killer was already caught. Well, someone's ghost thinks otherwise. Surprised you're not out with Mr. Wonderful on a nice day like today. What do you want, Johnny? Well, it seems that Billy is missing, and nobody knows where he is, yet both of his vehicles are still here. Maybe he hitchhiked out of town. The police officer doesn't just disappear off the face of the earth. I bet your boyfriend knows where he is. After all, a guy who's been running around town lying about being Bobby Delano's nephew gotta be up to something, right? So why are you asking me? Why don't you just go ask him yourself? Yeah, it's, it's not that simple. So I, uh, I heard a rumor your parents are out of town. So? So? This beach all to yourself? Fourth of July? Party? Show your friends you're still thinking of them. Johnny, I'm not really in the mood to throw a party. Neither am I, but I am tired of Frank and that uncle of his running things around here. Why don't you just leave him alone? Because they're scaring innocent people. Who's to say they're innocent? For Susan and now you. Jackie, wake up. He didn't come all the way down here just to make you his girlfriend. This town is, is going crazy. Billy is missing. Aren't you at all worried about what they're going to do next? Possibly to you? Come on. Tonight, here at your beach, supply everything. All right. You can have your party. Okay. See you tonight. You guys having fun? Yeah? yeah? Thanks for coming down. We'll see you guys. There you go. Hey, I'm surprised to see you here. Yeah, well, surprised to seem to be the drama around here lately. True. Did you tell anyone? No. Why not? What did I say? Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm throwing a party tonight. A party? Yeah. It's something that's been in the back of my mind. I figure with my parents gone, and I guess I would like to see everyone together again. Okay. So, are you coming? Um, yeah, um, hey, if I can, I'll come. See you there. So she didn't tell anyone. You're certain? Yeah. I know. She's full of surprises. But not as many as me. I'll see you at the radio station tonight. Do not be late. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fireworks over the lake and a killer reveal. What a night this will be. But here's a new surprise. My producers just informed me there may be another guest tonight. One of Lake Okaboji's very own may be joining Francis Larson on our airwaves. Apparently, she was also there that night. Well, that's the plan anyway. We'll be right back.
like a shack? Why? Mystery chef. But I recommend this one. This one it is. people. Do you, uh, care to dance? <laughs> uh, sure. You look good. Thank you. Come um, here. Everybody, happy Fourth of July! Yeah. Okay, drink up, cause this beer's on me, and I don't do this a lot. Okay. Okay. So tonight, everyone, we are having a very special event. We are celebrating the life of Francis Larson. So here, we prepared a special tribute in his honor. But since he's dead, I think we need someone to take his place. You know what, Frank? I think that you would be perfect for this part. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, hey, hey, Tommy, stop puking and start it up. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at this. This is Francis doing his favorite pastime. Eating cake and ice cream, everybody. Yeah, that's right, that's right, Tommy. Oh, okay, here we go. This is Francis at Halloween dressed as a pillow. It's a body pillow. <laughs> oh, no, 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 my fault. He's, he's a ghost. <laughs> wow, that's a, hey, that's a big ghost. It's okay to leave this dark again. So now, in the spirit of Bobby Delano, who loves his audiences, we, the audience, just found out that Bobby Delano has only one nephew. And guess what, Frank? You ain't it. The fat kid on the screen is. So our question here is just who the hell are you? I am Bobby Delano's nephew. <laughs> Why don't you sit back and enjoy the run, because I'm in control now. And while you're at it, why don't you tell us where Billy is, huh? What are you laughing at? <laughs> Jackie, you were there. Why didn't you do anything? <laughs> why didn't you say anything, huh? What's the matter, man? What's the matter, huh? I am Bobby Delano's nephew. I am Bobby Delano's nephew. Where's Susan? Shut up. Susan? Johnny. What's 
up, man? Susan's here. What? Okay, well, get him out of here. Yeah, you want me to throw him in the lake? No, I don't care. Just get him out of here right now. Hey, go. Jackie. Hey, come on. Hurry up. Hey. Where's Frank? Yeah, I, I didn't expect to see you here tonight. Johnny, just tell me where Frank is. I don't know where he is. Listen to me. Bobby Delano has been shot. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. No, you're not. Just tell me where he is. Look, I don't okay, know. Just get out of my way. What? Jackie, what the hell is going on? I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What, what is this? I what did you do to him? I only brought him here to tell the truth. Jackie! Should be a spectacular display tonight. Too bad Delano won't be here to enjoy it. But you live by the mob, you die by the mob, you know? Is that why you're celebrating? Mm. Look at this. 1939. My dad brought this back from France after the war. I've been saving it for a special occasion. I would say this qualifies. I think you deserve a good glass of wine after all you've been through. The way Delano used you, set your friend against you, and that imposter nephew of his, I bet he broke your heart. Not as bad as I broke his. You're not, uh, listening to hear the revelation of the big mystery? Oh, I, uh, I don't think there's going to be any big revelation tonight. I suppose after tonight, there's no one left who can reveal the truth except for me and you. Me and you? Of course. We're the only two people who really knows what happened that night. And from the looks of everything to me, you're off the hook. Are you suggesting that I drown that girl? I'm asking you a question. Barbara asked me to meet her, a block from your house that night. She wouldn't tell me why. Then I saw Francis Larson running for his life. And you, all drenched, chasing after him. <laughs> I actually believed that story you told me about how you heard a scream down at the beach, and you fell in when you went to see what it was. It was perfect. And threatening him you'd kill his mother worked beautifully. After all, you got Francis to confess. How, how but don't worry. You... I'm not gonna tell anybody. And Francis Larson isn't going to tell anyone either. I made sure of that tonight. The dose I gave him turned his brain to mush. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Francis Larson, what are you talking about? Wait, wait a minute. You didn't know that Francis Larson and Frank Delano were, you know, the same person? 
You didn't, did you? What did you think this whole charade was about? Francis Larson coming home to get his revenge. I knew they fooled everyone else, but you... I had no idea. You know... You are a very smart young woman. How did you figure all this out? I have my ways. But... There's one thing I don't know. Why didn't you pay her to get rid of it? Put her on a bus to Des Moines and call it a business trip? She wouldn't do it. I offered her everything. And she wouldn't do it. I understand. She should have listened to you. Music would be nice, don't you think? Is that why you came over here tonight? To get all your questions answered? Because if you tell anybody... I kept it quiet that night, didn't I? Isn't your uh, wife coming home tonight? As a matter of fact, she's not. So don't worry, because I'm going to take good care of you. Don't you find it interesting, Mr. Mayor, that for the last three years, Francis Larson has taken the blame for Barbara Stratton's murder, which you did, and now, just when he's about to go on the air to reveal the real identity of the killer, you have to do that, too. Any comments, Mr. Mayor? You, you, that would be checkmate, Mr. Mayor. Wow, and there you have it. But let's recap it all for anybody who's been gone for the last three years. The mayor seduces a poor young girl, but she gets pregnant. Uh-oh. The mayor wants her to get an abortion, but she says no. So what does he do? Kills her. Nice, two wrongs make a right. And as he's dragging her body out of the lake near his house, he spots Francis who was out fishing. So he chases him. How he didn't catch that big boy, I'll never know. But anyway, the mayor has a bigger problem now. So he gets the lazy chief to believe his story that Francis did it. Good motive, right? Fat kid nobody likes, snaps, and he's at the crime scene. All he has to do now is convince the coroner to keep the pregnancy a secret and he's set free. But not good for the mayor that Francis' Uncle Bobby is very rich and powerful and a pretty smart guy. So Francis becomes Frank and he returns to get justice, plus a little revenge along the way. But I don't think anyone expected it to end like this. I guess sometimes unplanned events can turn into great opportunities. One unfortunate thing, though, no one could find me and cash in on the prize. But at least we found out who the real killer was. When are the villains ever gonna learn? In the end, you never win. She almost killed you. Johnny almost killed me. She had no idea what he was doing. She knew exactly what he was doing. She had the party at her house. She was confused. She thought I was using her. Well, you were using her, weren't you? You were just using her. What? Wait. 
Why are you going back over there? To say goodbye. You don't owe her a goodbye. You're going back over there to see where you two still stand. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right about this whole thing. This whole thing was about me to go see if I could get Jackie. That's what it is. That's what it is, isn't it? You think that she's the one that really loves you. What are you talking about? She's the one that betrayed you. She doesn't love you. What is wrong with you? I'm the one that really loves you. It was your job and you were doing it for money. I wasn't doing it for the money. I stopped doing it for the money the day that you came along. I was doing everything for you. But not anymore. I won't stand in your way and you never have to see me again. have been blackened and the floor is wet. You have tears upon your shoulder. You wear sorrow for a dress. You stumble upon emptiness. Emptiness has stumbled upon you. I'm the one that will you. You have novels on your bookshelf. Stories in your heart. Gone are the days when you could tell them apart. You're looking for Ophelia. Ophelia is just looking okay. for you. Face to the left. Go to the right. You're a child of the dark. She's the one that betrayed you. Child of the light. You are holding on to midnight and fighting for you. Show myself the door Don't let me fall, no 